Hi everyone, welcome back. It is Tuesday, December the 27th, and I'm here to share some really good news with you. I have been participating in Kelly Pickering's Cookie Cutter Challenge, and this was a challenge in the Daily 30 Facebook group where you had four levels of stitching to do. Level one, you were to identify a separate cookie cutter in each set of stitches that you did. In fact, you had to do a separate cookie cutter shape um, for every one of your stitches. Level one was 15 cookie cutters at 200 stitches a piece. Level two was um, five cookie cutters at 300 stitches a piece. Level three was three cookie cutters at 400 stitches a piece. And the final level, four, was one cookie cutter for 500 stitches. And that's the one I did today. So I decided to pick up one of my pieces that I have not done work on in a while, but that I love and I wanted to see some progress on it. And I also wanted it to be something that I thought I could get my stitches in fairly quickly. So I didn't want to do a lot of half stitches and full coverage. So I put my um, vintage ornament up after the last cookie cutter that I did um, that was 400 stitches. And I pulled out Autumn in the Country. It's been a while since you've seen this one, but it's a Just Nan, and she has one for every season. This is the only one I have, I believe. But um, I just think it's beautiful. And when I pulled it out today to work on it, I realized something. I have a wrong color in the middle section of this border. I don't know how I missed it. I don't, I, I think I do. When I started this, I started it at the beach uh, in May for one of my May Monday starts. And I wanted to start in a border piece and I did. But when I got down to this piece, I don't think I had the right color for the middle. And so I substituted a different color that I had thinking I would just do it in the border. And so today when I pulled it out, it had been so long, I had I'd kind of forgotten about that. And I thought, oh, my border looks darker than theirs, but you know what? I like it. So I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. So here's where I'm at. And yes, I did my 500 stitches. I actually did 526 stitches today. And here's how I did that. I started right here with this black bird. <laughs> I thought he's easy enough. And I did the bird. Then I came over and did this whole piece in the middle. And then I had made the comment when I first started this that I wasn't sure if I was gonna put the alphabets in the corner or not, but I decided that it really looked good to have them there. It was a neat way to do an alphabet for a sampler. You know, it wasn't spread all across the whole thing. What I didn't think about is, I didn't realize it until I got ready to stitch it today. It's one over one. <laughs> so much for not doing half stitches or back stitches and things you had to count, you know, anyway. At least each stitch counts as a whole stitch. But it's one over one, which means there's a whole lot of stitches in those little alphabets. So I did both corners. So I have the alphabet done um, all the way through O. And um, it gave me just these this top portion here that I did, the 526 stitches. But I just think it's beautiful. It's just coming together so, so well. And you know, my plan had been to start at the top now that I've got the border down as far as I can see. And then I was going to go ahead and do some of that top until I could roll that border back down. So my thought is that I will do at least, you know, around in here where one of the bands stops across there before I roll it up. So I still have a little bit of stitching to go. I'm talking about, I'll probably stitch down to somewhere in here to one of those bands and then I'll roll it up so I can get the rest of it on my work surface. But here is Autumn in the Country. And you know, if you remember, this fabric is called Autumn and um, I think it's absolutely, absolutely beautiful. I love the way those colors are gonna show up with those in the piece itself. I think they're gonna complement each other really, really well. 
So that means I finished the cookie cutter challenge. It's the 27th, so I did it in the month of December. And now I have completed all my prompts for the month. All that I'm gonna do anyway. So yay for me. I spent a little time uh, today kidding up one of my new starts that's on my WIPCO board and uh, that I'm gonna take with me on my trip so that I can work on it while I'm traveling. And I'm excited about that. I was I kitted up the my, um, March wordplay. That was one of the numbers that were called for my WIPCO board. Um, I hope you're having a great week. Um, I think the week between Christmas and New Year's is um, a wonderfully uh, restful week. It is for me, you know, the rush of Christmas is over. And um, this year, because of our um, trip, I'm not gonna be throwing a New Year's Eve party, so I don't have this big crunch to put together a menu or, you know, get the house ready or anything else. I actually can relax and rest. And so tomorrow, I'm taking Coco to the groomer first thing in the morning. And then we're gonna hit it hard with the Christmas decor. And then that'll be it. I won't have anything else that I absolutely have to do and I'll be ready to travel. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I hope that I can do uh, some interesting video clips for you while we're traveling. And um, I hope that you'll enjoy uh, taking the trip with us when I get back. You know, I could chrono chronologically show you what all we were doing, um, or at least parts of it. And um, my husband warned me today that he's signing us up for line dance classes. I won't be taping that. <laughs> oh, everybody, have a great week. And if I have any more stitching to share with you this week, you'll be the first to know. Happy stitching, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's December 29th and uh, Thursday. And I'm here to tell you about my stitching for the last couple of days. I really, really thought about the 12 and 12. I really wanted to participate in that with Kia B and Pam and everyone else on Instagram that's doing that. And I even made up a list, my 12 and 12, and I even thought I may have to spread it over two days for me because I, we're packing and getting ready to leave on the first, early on the first. And I thought, so, you know, I might have to split it in half because part of that night on the 31st, we'll be packing our car and all this kind of stuff. And then I decided, you know, I'm just not gonna have time to do that. I'm not gonna have the brain um, space to do that when I'm trying to make sure I haven't forgotten anything that I'm packing. Let me turn this heater off, I can hear it. I'm sure you can too. It's very, it's still kind of nippy here. So I had my little space heater right next to me to keep me warm up here. So instead, what I did is I just grabbed the first thing off my what I would have worked on, my 12 and 12, and I started out by saying, what have I not worked on in a while? And that was the first thing I thought of. So I pulled out my spring quilt. And when I left off with this last, I had finished this row across here. And I had not picked it up since then. I've been concentrating so much on Christmas. So I picked this up and said, well, I'm going to start on this row here. So I grabbed this space here and that's what I worked on. So I stitched 433 stitches in it yesterday and that got all of the cross stitch done in here. And then today I picked it up and I did all the back stitching. Um, the vine is back stitched, every, all of the pieces back stitched and that was 303 stitches counting two for one. So 736 stitches for that little section right there. And I wanted to share something with you. Look at the picture on the pattern and how bright and kind of orangey those colors look. And then look at it in real life at how beautifully rosy and red um, and vibrant those colors are. That's what we mean when we say that the pattern covers don't always do the pattern justice. And that's why when you see a model of something, it can really impress you. When I did the first sections that just had these 
beautiful corners in them. My friend Donna looked at it and said, wow, you know, that's really different from what the picture looks like. And this one shows it too, a whole lot. So I wanted to share that with you uh, just to say, always pull the floss if you if you like something. Not sure the color palette is what you like. Pull the floss and see. It may surprise you. Anyway, I'm really happy with this. This is on my whip go board for 2023, and my goal for most of my whip goes are five hours. But this one, I said I wanted to do one section. So here's the funny part. It's like an insurance policy. This is the next little section I would do. Technically, it's probably part of this one, but it's gridded off on the pattern, like it's a separate little place. So if I'm crushed when this is called, if I'm crushed for time, I can just do that little section and I have met my whip go goal. <laughs> if I have plenty of time, then I might wanna do these two. You know, insurance. We got a little insurance there, a little wiggle room. Love it. Okay, so I'm not doing 12 and 12. I'm sorry that I can't, but I did get some stitching in <laughs> and I'm really happy about the progress that I made, so that's awesome. The other thing I wanted to mention is that a lot of you, and I'm enjoying all of them, are putting out your uh, whip parades. And I got to thinking about that. And I stitch on all of my whips, probably at least every other month, if not every month. And um, other than two that I have not been paying much attention to because they are in time out is Mermaid and my Chatelaine. And it's been so long since I've touched the Chatelaine. Some of you may say, what, Dina has a Chatelaine on the go? Yeah, I do. And I haven't touched it in a while. I made a mistake on it. I misread the pattern and I did an entire section in Petty Point that didn't have to be. And I got mad at myself. It was like, you can't even read a pattern. So I put it away thinking it was just too much for me. And I think I'm probably ready now to tackle it. Um, Maybe in the coming year. That just might be fun. I've been talking with Julie of Stitching at the Cabin. We have messaged back and forth a little bit about doing a Chatelaine together. And I think she would start that one and I would start working on that one. Uh, but we're waiting on finishing a couple of other things. And, and I'm not in a hurry, Julie. This is not a hint. Um, so maybe next year we might, we might work that in at some point. We'll see. So having said that, um, I didn't think maybe a whip parade would be quite that interesting because you wouldn't be seeing a whole lot of new things. So instead, I thought it might be fun to do a whip go board parade because I have a lot of new starts for my whip go board and that would be new things for you to see and I think you might enjoy that. So I will try to do that before I leave and maybe uh, edit it and get it ready. And that might be something nice to happen while I'm gone so that um, it can go up and you guys can enjoy it, um, you know, maybe in the first or second week of January while we're traveling. That would be kind of nice. And um, I would appreciate it, you know, if somebody planned ahead and gave me something to watch while I'm stitching. I, I'll appreciate that when y'all do it. And by the way, I'm loving all of your whip parades. Um, so, I think I'm going to try to film that before we leave town. I have to hurry because, you know, we're leaving in a few days. I think Coco knows something is afoot. I really do. Coco's not a very um, affectionate puppy. She she loves us very much. We know that. I mean, she you know, she wants to hang out with us and things like that. But Coco doesn't like you to put her in your lap at all. If she wants to lay on you, she will lay on your leg or cross your knee or something while you're, you know, on a couch or in the bed. But if you try to put her in your lap, she is very uncomfortable. She does not like it. Um, and so she's not a real, what I call a real lovey-dovey dog. But today, I couldn't get anything done. Every few minutes, Coco came over and put her little paws on my arm. I was here stitching at the stand, and so I have my arms out like this, and she would put all her weight on that arm, so I couldn't lift it. I could not do anything but look at her. And I would love on her and pet her, and I'd play tug with her with a toy. 
uh, we went down and I sat with her. She doesn't like to eat alone. She wouldn't eat all morning. So I finally went down and just sat next to her food bowl. And when she realized I was going to sit there, she ate. And I sat there until she finished eating. <laughs> She's not spoiled at all. She is very spoiled. And that's okay. She will continue to be because that's what I like to do. But... She's just been what I call clingy today. I'm very surprised, especially with me, because Tommy is her person. My husband's her person. But he had a lot of errands to run today to get ready for his trip, for our trip. And today was his big day to do that. He, ran, he went all the way down to REI. He's got some hiking boots he wanted to exchange and things like that so he can walk. Because most of what he will do in the ports is just get off the boat and go for walks. And so he needs good walking shoes. Anyway... He was gone for a while today, and she would not let me stitch. That's the first. She has never interrupted me. When I'm cross-stitching, she'll come lay next to me on the floor, and every now and then she'll get up and want you know me to love on her, and then she's happy, and she goes on. But today, there was not enough love around. It just wasn't enough. So I think that she's kind of knows that something's happening. There must be a vibe in the air. Maybe she feels... Our excitement building, I don't know. But tonight was the night that we brought up suitcases so that we can start packing. My husband brought me my suitcase for my cross stitch and I'll be packing it up tonight. And, I, and it's the same size suitcase that Coco carries when we go traveling together that we put all of her food and her, her feeding bowls and her toys and we get, we, she has her own little suitcase. And as y'all know, she guards it when we pack it. She'll, she won't, she won't leave it. We have to hide it or she won't come to bed. She'll sleep next to her suitcase. So anyway, suitcases are coming up and Coco's suitcase isn't coming because she's going to Fred's and she doesn't need a suitcase for Fred's. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> but yes, I have a picture of her, uh, the way she was clinging to me today. I just reached around and grabbed my phone and popped a picture of it and I caught it. And so, because normally when I do that and pull a camera around, she takes off. She's, she doesn't always like to have her picture made. But I got it today. So I'll put it in here and you can see what a sweet little face I had the pleasure of looking at most of the day. <laughs> I hope you've had a good day of stitching. And I hope you have a great week ahead of you. Happy stitching, everybody. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is my WhipGo board video to show you what new starts I have on my WhipGo boards. If it's a current whip, I'll try to put in at least a picture, if I have it, of where my current whip is at. Um, a lot of my whips I will have here. This is my storage system for my roller frames. Um, it's a drying rack, <laughs> but I got some S hooks and I've got all the roller frames uh, hanging up there and I can just throw a cover over it to keep it dust free. So I'll be grabbing those for the whips if it calls for them. Uh, if they are where I can put my hands on them really quick, I'll try to get those for you or I'll put in a picture. But I think important for this video or the new starts for next year. So that's really why I wanted to do it for you. I'm hoping this will give you some inspiration, a uh, little bit of new things to look forward to in the coming year. And a lot of you in the past have looked through your stash and have decided that you, ha if you had things that I was gonna start, you'd start them with me. So I hope that happens this year too. Let's get started. I have two WhipGo boards this year. I have one that I consider my regular WhipGo board and it has a lot of whips in it, but it also has a lot of new starts in it because a good number of my whips go on my second whip go board. My second whip go board is what I consider my holiday slash seasonal board. So it's a particular holiday or it's a particular season of the year, autumn, spring, that sort of thing. We'll start with the regular whip go board and I'm just gonna go in order and tell you what each one is. One, two, three, four, five, and so forth because that's how I have them stored in the box if they're a new start. I have a box right here next to me. If they're a whip, they're of course not in the box, so we'll go from there. 
Let's start with number one on the regular board. It is a hindsight pattern. It is called Love Mom. And it is a beautiful little piece. I'm doing it on a color and cotton fabric uh, called Haystack. It was the July fabric of the month last year. And the little charm, the heart charm that goes up here is included. This was a gift to me. And I am delighted to get this started next year. Number two is also a new start. And it is called Sewing Bee. The Sewing Bee, pardon me. And it's an Erica Michaels. And it has both a pillow and one of those little strawberries. I don't know which one I will do first. Um... Maybe the actual strawberry. I don't know. I fell in love with the strawberries when I did one this Christmas for an exchange piece, and um, I may have to do that again. And the fabric for this one um, is another color in cotton that was the uh, October 2021 fabric of the month, and it's called Willow. And I think that is a very good match to Eric Michaels. She did hers on Legacy Linen, but I'm doing mine on Lugana from Color and Cotton. Okay, number three is a whip. Number three is Pandemic. It is a whip of mine that I've been working on. Last year, it was my journey piece with my guild. I had uh, said I wanted to do two pages. I wound up doing three but I have pages four and five left to do to finish four and do the, set, the part of one that's number five. So that's my number three on my regular whip go board. Number four is a whip. It's I Am a Needle Smith by By the Bay, and I will insert a picture here of where I'm at on it right now. Number five is my brand new start for my birthday. It's Let Love Rain. And again, I will insert a picture of it because it is packed up already. Number six is my March wordplay. I don't have a good picture of it because I was gifted these patterns after someone else stitched them, and the cover page for March is not in here, but that'll give you an idea of what's in there. It's got lots of little sheep and things of that nature, and I look, went online recently just to look at it um, to make sure I liked the color scheme of it so that I didn't change anything out, and I'm just going to stitch it exactly the way that it's listed. Number seven is casting a spell. Okay. This is casting a spell. And I have a goal on this one other than five hours of stitching. My goal for this one is to stitch one section. So I'll be doing one of those little sections in there, probably one in the middle that's smaller. <laughs> Um, since I'm trying to do two boards this year, that would be my guess. I do not have fabric picked for this yet, but I, I'm sure that I have a neutral in my stash that would be really easy to do. So I've got that ready to go here. Number eight is Sew Together. I'm doing this group. I've completed several of them already. These are the ones I have left to finish. So, I'll show you what I've done already. These are the three I've done. I'm stitching these with Sulky. And I was limited into what colors I had to use because I bought all the colors for the first one and I just made the rest of them fit. But my lovely husband gifted me a pack of sulky, big, 
box of Folky for Christmas. So I will get the pleasure of now looking to see if I want to add any more colors to make sure I have everything I need for the three remaining of these. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you all three because they are listed on my Whip Go Goals um, as number eight, number 16, and number 20. So let's go ahead and see all of those at one time since I've got them pulled out. This will be number eight. This will be number 16. And this will be number 20. And I am going to stitch those in a row of three, just like I did the first three that I had picked. And then, sorry, this is shaking the table, I apologize. Then I'll be able to frame them as two uh, complementary pieces together, three and three. So I'm trying to get these next three started on my Whipgo board so I can hopefully finish them next year and get those two things up and planned away. Okay, um, number nine is July wordplay. I showed you March separate because I'm taking it with me on the trip because that one was called. <laughs> it was number six and it was already been called, so I'm taking it with me. But for um, number nine, I'm doing July wordplay. So here is the July wordplay, and that is a new start for number nine. I also have the May wordplay, and that is gonna be number 11. So again, you can see I'm trying to work on getting my series going along a little bit better. And then, with the uh, March that I already have, that would be three more months that I hope to get to finish. I've already done two, so we're getting there. Um, number 10 is Mermaid. I'll try to put a picture in here for you of where she is. And then we'll skip 11 since that's the May wordplay and I've already shared it with you. Number 12 is Hawk Run Hollow. My Hawk Run Hollow is spring at Hawk Run Hollow. And I am on the third block. And this year I've made it my journey piece for my guild to do these two blocks, to finish both of these blocks in this row. So I put it on my Whipgo board to help me get there. <laughs> So Hawk Run Hollow. I have a free space on my 13, um, since, particularly since I'm doing two boards. I felt I might need that. I couldn't imagine having three numbers called on two boards in one month. So I just put a free space on both of mine. Number 14 is 13th Colony. Again, I'll put a picture in for you. And number 15 is Stitch Box. Stitch Box is a brand new um, piece for me. It was gifted to me by my friend Marissa, and she bought it at StitchCon 2019 when there was a drunk show there by Jeanette Douglas. She bought it, and she held on to it and gifted it to me. Isn't that beautiful? I have already gotten the tray. I ordered it through Keepsakes, and I am doing the pattern on a beautiful 32 count Joblin. It's a limited edition color and cotton. There is no color name on it, but it should do the whole piece. And you can't see it as well as I can, but it has a beautiful purplish undertone. It isn't showing up on camera and I'm so sorry it's not because it is quite obvious to the naked eye. And this has a lot of purple in it. You know, the little pretty lavender purple. So the purple under, ooh, I almost had it. 
the purple undertone in here is going to be beautiful with this piece, I think. And I have all of the beautiful threads and accoutrement with it that Marissa gifted me. And I have it ready to go for number 15. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to zip that up. I'm trying not to zip anything up in case you're wearing earbuds. Number 16 is one of those three sew together birds. Number 17 is Royal Games 1. This is where I'm at right now on Royal Games 1, ready to start her neck and work up and get her head done. So the first lady is getting close to being cross-stitched. Then we'll have the second lady to do. All right, number 18 is Sampler for All Seasons. By the Scarlet House. And I am doing this one on a beautiful piece of fabric that came with it. I bought this as a kit and it is Steinbeck, and it's um, actually, um, the one I got is an Ada. It's a 16 count Ada. I loved the colorway on it so much. I didn't want linen. <laughs> um, so I went ahead and just got the Ada, the 16 count Ada, which will make it the same as the 32 count, um, you know. And I got it for a lesser, cost because I got Ada. So I had a couple of different reasons for doing that. Um, my friend Glow has ordered that too and um, she is hoping to start it whenever I do. So whenever it's called, Glow will be ready. Um, the next one is the one my friend Donna stitched and gave me the pattern to stitch and I hadn't had a chance to do it yet so I put it on here so I could. <laughs> it's called Chubby Bird. I think it's precious. Can't wait to do that one. Okay. Um, the next one, uh, number 20, is another one of the three uh, sew together the three remaining ones that I want to finish. And number 21 is a new start, and it's a Valentine's one. And even though this is my regular board, I didn't have room for this one on the other board, so I'm doing it. It's called Be Mine. It's a scissor tail design. It's Be Mine Always. And I'm going to do mine with the Karen Water Lilies. Uh, silk called Grape. It's not exactly red or burgundy. It's a little bit of a purpley color to it, but I think that that will be quite different and lovely. I can't wait to do that. And I'm doing it on this color in cotton limestone, which was my March fabric of the month this past year in 2022. And I think that grape will pop on that really well. Number 22 on this regular whip go board is called Love Abides. This was gifted to me by my friend Glow and she kitted it all up for me. I just love it. It's a Lottie Da pattern. And the fabric that's included that I've put with it is um Color and Cotton Lugana. It was a May 2021 fabric of the month. It's called Garden Path. And I think that is gonna be beautiful together. And there's the floss for it already. Isn't that beautiful? That was part of the gift. Thank you, Glow. So I can't wait to get started on this one. This one is also a gift from my friend Glow, 
It's called a floral doodle. And I don't have a picture of it, so I'm gonna show you a real quick, real quick um, little look. <laughs> it's so cute. I can't wait to do that. And I'm gonna do mine on an antique ivory 28 count cashel because it's the perfect color. And I had it in my stash and I wanted to use it um, so that I could make good use of it. The next one is also one that I didn't have room for in my uh, seasonal or uh, holiday um, board, but I wanted to do it and I've had it for a while. And um, so here it, here it is, Old Glory. And I had a note on here that I needed to order fawn and tin bucket and I see they're both in here now. I've added them in. <laughs> so they're good to go. I have everything I need now. And I'm doing this on linen as well. I had a little linen in my stash and I'm trying to get it used up. Um, it's a lamb's wool linen, 32 count. It's a, by Wilchel. It's very stiff, but it's a small piece. And I'm hoping that I can knock that out without too much trouble. So the last one on my regular whip go board is a sewing is my heart's desire. And this was gifted to me by my sister Stephanie this year for Christmas. And so this is the beautiful piece. Um, and it's uh, it's a hands-on design. It, it you all know, know I love her. And then I got this beautiful piece of uh, Lugana called Pearl Lugana. And this is by Mystic, I think, Fabrics, Mystic Stitch. Anyway, that's what it looks like. I think that's going to be a perfect color for that color palette. I've already pulled the floss to go with it. So there you go. Stitching is my heart's desire. Gonna do that. That concludes the first whip go board. So my second whip go board now will have a lot of whips. <laughs> I'll have to put in a lot of pictures. Um, the first one is Welcoming Christmas. It's the one I'm doing out of a magazine and I'll put a picture in here of where I'm at. Second is Kringles. You just saw this one recently if you've been watching because I just finished that roof. <laughs> so here it is. It's ready to go for next year. And I'll be starting on that front room. Try to get it done. So that's Kringles. Now, um, number three is a new start. And it is called North Pole Express. Um, North Pole Express was a complimentary chart um, with the purchase of the classic colorwork threads, and it's designed by Little House Needleworks. And so I printed it off, and I uh, will be stitching that one. I have not pulled fabric for that yet, but I have plenty of neutrals, so I I'm, don't think I'll have any trouble with it. Okay. Number four is turkey time. And there you go. I'll do one of the two. I don't know which two, but I think they're both precious. So cute. Spring quilt. You just saw spring quilt. I'll put in a picture for you. Um, but I just finished one of those sections. Number six is the autumn bell pull. You can see it right back here. So let me pause and go get it. Here's where we are. We finished that second U and I will be rolling this up uh, when I start on it next. 
I'm leaving it here so I can count down the six spaces I need and put a pin there so I'll know where my top stitch has to go when I look at the M. So that'll be the letter I start on when this one is called. Number seven is Halloween Quaker. I'll pop a picture in for you on where I left off on that last time you saw it. And number eight is Nativity. You just saw this recently. Um, this is where I left off on it. And hopefully I'll get a little more progress on it when it's called in January or next year, whenever. Number nine is Mr. Mittens, and I'll pop a picture in for you for him, definitely, because he's packed. Number 10 is a new start for Unto Us. This was a gift for Christmas. Isn't that beautiful? And it has all of the floss with it. Thank you, sister. And I have paired it with Legacy. I picture this plus fabric. By, uh, I bought it through Be Stitch Me. But you know, I've used Legacy more than once. But I think that beautiful variegation is going to be gorgeous with that color palette. So I'm looking forward to that. And this one is actually going with me because it was called. <laughs> it was number 10 and six and 10 were called. So that one's gonna travel with me as well. Number 11 is Christmas Sentiments and it's already packed up. So uh, I'll put in a picture for you there. And number 12 is a brand new one. Jingle Jolly Joy. It is from Misty Purcell. And I have a story to tell you about this one. Misty, I'm gonna brag on you a little bit. I purchased this when it was a um, mystery and you got the border and then you got the, the three different pieces separately. They came in an email and I ordered it with the fabric and the floss from her. So I got it, you know, I got the the fabric and the threads to go with it. And the fabric is a, um, well, let me look and see. I ordered the floss pack from her, the Jingle Jolly Joy floss pack. I don't know if she still has that or not. I haven't looked. Um, but the, um, fabric that I bought from her at the time that I did this was it's opulence and I got mine in a 32 count isn't that beautiful one of her hand dyed fabrics so I ordered it I printed off the first two the border and the first clue and I um, moved them over to save them somewhere on one of my devices. And I did that with each one. I couldn't find them. I got ready to put them in my new starts for my 22 in 22 Christmas this summer. Couldn't find it. All I could find was the first one. It'd have been great if I could have found the last one because the others would have been there. But no, mm -mm. all I could find was the first one. So I emailed, um, Misty and I told her, you know, what had happened. And I sent her the email where she had sent me the original clue that I had, um, the first pattern. And I said, this proves I bought it. I said, is there any way that you can make it where I could download it one more time and I'll print it? I won't even save it. And she sent me a link and said, go right ahead. Thank you, Misty. That was really sweet of you. And now I can stitch it. I'm so excited. Number 13 is my free space again. And then number 14 is also a brand new gift that I got for Christmas. My sister Stephanie struck again and she gifted me a Christmas piece. 
Isn't that beautiful? Noel in blue. Four sweater ornament pattern. Original designs by uh, Lila Umstead. Um, now, Lana did a tutorial using these, and I'm gonna, uh, gonna save that to my files so that when I get ready to finish these, I can. But I've already pulled all the floss, so they're ready to go. And the fabric that I'm using is a color in cotton. It's light brown sugar. I think that's gorgeous. And I think it's gonna be really, really pretty with those light blues. I think it'll go really well together. Looking forward to starting that. Number 15 is Autumn in the Village. Autumn in the Village is my experiment on 36 count that I'm falling in love with. And the story here is that I have to use really, really good cheaters to do this with. Went to my eye doctor recently, took some 36 count with me and said, I want to be able to see this. She can't make it happen. Not naked eye, not with just my contacts. So I'll have to continue to use cheaters for that one. Then my next one is Small Gift. It's again a whip, and I will put a picture in here for you. Then I have another new start. Sister, if you're watching this one, look away. This one will work its way to your house at some point. My sister collects this. And Pam from uh, Just Keep Stitching, I need to check with you and make sure you have this one in your collection because I know you're doing a lot of those. And um, if you don't have that one, let me know and I'll save it for you um, for sure. Okay. The next one is uh, Nativity again because I really want to get that done next year. <laughs> So I did put it in there twice. Number 19 is Snow and Mountains, and um, it's actually in French, uh, but I won't mutilate it, and um, I'll put a picture in for you for that. As well as 20, which is Miss Christmas Eve. I'll, I'll give you a photo of her. Number 21 is a new start. It's a patriotic new start. And it's a heartstring samplery called Sweet Land of Liberty. And it was a gift. Isn't that beautiful? And I already have pulled all my specialty hand dye flosses to go with it. And I have a beautiful fabric. This is a light brown sugar. Belfast Linen. I got it from Reflections Framing and um, Stitching at Retreat when they had some small pieces on a table. And I've looked at how big this needs to be um, and it will fit on this. And I think that is going to be gorgeous with that color palette. Don't you? Anyway. Looking forward to that. Okay. The next one is my Christmas Village ornament, or my vintage Christmas ornament. And I just worked on it. I'm going to pop a picture in here of it for you. Twenty-three is my Halloween trio, which is a brand new start. And I will put that in here for you as a picture. Twenty-four is joyful scene. That'll be a picture for you too because it's packed up. And then the last one is autumn in the country. I just stitched on it recently, so I have a great picture of where it is, um, and I'll 
pop that in for you as well. And that concludes my two Whipgo boards for the coming year. A good mixture, I think, of whips and new starts. It uh, gives me a way to get uh, several things started that I've been wanting to start. Didn't allow me to start everything I wanted to start. <laughs> so at this point, I don't know where I'll be fitting in these other starts, but I have several that I want to do. So I'm um, seriously considering, um, since I'm not going to do 12 in 12, having a new year, New Year's, New Year, New Start, and do it sometime during uh, New Year's Eve. It may not be at midnight, but sometime during that day, I may go ahead and have a new start and may grab one of the ones I didn't get to add to my Whip Go board <laughs> uh, that I want to start and let that be one way of doing it. I have several that are Christmas, you know, I love Christmas and I tend to get a lot of Christmas. Uh, patterns and I have several so I may wind up having to do another Christmas in July where I do a few starts maybe one every Monday again something like that it will not be 23 for 2023 I can tell you that <laughs> won't be that because I'm still working on finishing the ones I started uh, in July I didn't get all 22 of them finished of course so anyway I hope you've seen something new hope you see something you like I have a I think a very eclectic mix of things um, and I hope that uh, you've enjoyed watching me go through those with you and letting you get an idea of what you'll be seeing in the coming year. Happy New Year everybody. Happy stitching. It's old, old. What do you need sweetie? Old, I to tell you guys Look at this. <laughs> What is it, sweetie? Uh, okay, you want to play? Show me your toy. Show me your toy you want to play with. Which one? Huh? Which one you want? Is that the one you want? Let me see. Let me see it. Okay.